Hello, Max NG7M here, and I'm actually right here in the lower left on my screen here. You should be able to see that, and um, I thought I'd make another ad hoc video. It's been a while, and it's Sunday morning for the uh, uh, CQ Worldwide DX um, CW contest, which is always a fun one, and we are like at the crazy bottom of a sunspot cycle, but um, there's a, some year upon. And I thought I'd just do a little searching and pouncing. I've done this before on previous videos, um, but I thought I'd talk a little bit more about the setup, and then we'll we'll pounce around. So um, right now I'm just I'm running um, N1MM uh, Logger Plus, which is awesome, and um, this is recorded in 4K. So right here um, you've got the logging window for N1MM. And um, this is my log right above it. I mean, you can range these windows any way you want. And um, I've just been playing around. Oh, I probably operated, I don't know, six or seven hours or something, just uh, pouncing. But you can see over here my score. I've got, you know, just a handful of cues on 160 meters, 60 on 80, 124 on 7 megahertz, and then 60 on 14 megahertz. And the demo will probably just stick to... Uh, uh, 14 megahertz. However, I can see there are spots on 15 meters, so we might take a look at 15 meters too. So um, I'm running assisted and I'm running legal limit for the US 1500 watts out using a uh, RF kit, RF 2K plus amplifier, which there's a bunch of videos on that. And so I've got actually the VNC screen into the RF kit right here um, on that window there. And then I'm for monitoring my power, I'm using an LP700. N8LP, Larry Phipps, um, it's a great um, coupling power meter. Anyway, so I've got that going here. You'll see the power, um, both these windows up here. The N1MM log is here. Um, everybody will be looking at the eye candy here with the spectrum displays with N1MM. What's going on there, and I've talked a little bit about this before, is I'm using Winfrey K3 Suite. And I'm not going to show you the Winfrey K3 Suite window, but I will show you the Winfrey K3 Suite spectrum display which is right here. And so it's running off of an LP Pan 2 with a high-end USB ASUS sound card. So this is the native um, spectrum display for um, Winfrey K3 Seat. But down here you can actually turn on a UDP feed to where, I mean, it's really simple, you know, uh, at the end of the day you can turn on a user datagram feed which um, N1MM can listen to. So in the spectrum display there, uh, N2IC, Steve London has done a great job with that. And I'm sure some of the other N1M guys have too. Anyway, so what's going on here is this particular spectrum display, I have the UDP feed on, and I minimize this window because I'm using the native N1MM spectrum display, and it's listening to that port. So I've got two spectrum displays listening to the same UDP feed. I've got one here horizontal, and then I have one here um, vertical and with these feeds you can just drag them right and it just automatically goes to uh, horizontal on your spectrum display or if you resize the window you can it's cool right it's done a great job on that so it goes to a vertical so it's kind of nice um, I mean sometimes I just use the regular um, uh, band map display there but this is kind of cool because you've got the the spots superimposed on the spectrum and sometimes when I'm just tuning, I'll look at the horizontal. If I'm jumping around the spots, I kind of tend to look at the vertical one, you know, personal preference. And so on the left here, you can see all the multipliers and I'm sorting, I'm kind of jumping all over here. So um, you can see the spots on both the spectrum displays. And over here, I have the Telnet interface to N1MM Plus and I'm connected to the NC7J uh, DX packet cluster uh, via Telnet, which actually runs in my shack. I, I host and run the NC7J, um, it's an AR6 node uh, DX cluster. And so I have a filter set up to only get spots from states for the most part that are around Utah, my QTH is in Utah. And um, so I'm, I'm looking at CW skimmer spots and then also human spots, but I, I limit especially the CW skimmer spots to the states around me. So any of the states that have skimmer servers, I'm seeing those spots. So you're gonna see those coming in over here. So you can see N6TV, He's, he listens really well on the West Coast there. And WA7LNW is down in near St. George, Utah. He's the other skimmer in Utah. But anyway, you can see the spots that are coming in. 
and um, that's for another video. But um, as those spots come in in real time, right, they're going to populate on the uh, spectrum displays, and then also here in the multipliers. So right now I'm only looking at 20 meters, and so there's 142 cues right here. Um, I'm just going to hope that the 4K video shows that. And I'm currently sorted by um, direction of my beam. I have a stepper um, step IR DB18 at 80 feet, which plays pretty well. And again, I'm on 20 meters. And so I'm just, you know, going by direction, right? So uh, on these spots, so I typically, you know, you can jump around. I'll come over here and just start clicking on spots, see if I can hear them, but it's based upon the an antenna direction. So um, for the antenna control, rotor control, it's all integrated. I am using PST Rotator, uh, which also interfaces with my Step IR controller, which is an SDA 2000, actually on the DB18. So I'm pointed at 60 degrees down here. You can see that right here. Move the window around a little bit. And then here is the uh, azimuth direction for uh, N1MM. So what goes on here is N1MM, if I want to control the rotor from N1MM, it's again a UDP feed that PST Rotator listens to. PST Rotator has a serial connection to my uh, RC2-2800PX controller, which is hooked up to um, my Orion uh, 2800. Man, I got that right off the top of my head. The rotor in the tower. Uh, so, right, it's all software control, so I don't have to touch anything. And then I'm running a K3S here, which you can't see. I don't have a camera on it. Um, but let's, this, you know, enough of that. That kind of covers the setup here. And then I'm using uh, Winkier with N1MM for the keying, um, automated keying. And then I have a, a paddle here, which is hooked up to the Winkier. Uh, so, you know, if I need to do fills or whatever. So let's do this. Let's turn on the... Um, Audio. Now you're going to have the audio, the K3S audio will be on the left channel, but you'll hear, hear the side tone when I key on both channels. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn on that audio, and I think you'll be able to hear me fine over the K3. So we're going to turn on the K3 audio. You should hear that now, and I'm listening. So I kind of set this up. Um, EF8R is right here, uh, right on um, 14030.5. And so we're going to work him. Our, there he is. So I just called him. And he didn't hear me. So you can see the power meters. I'm, you know, putting out about 1,500 watts. And so he's got another guy calling him. He just sent a report. His CQ zone's 33. So he's in the Canary. There, I'm calling him. There, you hear me? Oh, I sent my call again, sorry. Then I sent my report, 59903. And uh, the reason it didn't just send my report there is the cursor was on the call sign. So, um, now you heard on my report, um, the 599 is fast. So if I go into the, uh, you know, you need to spend some time in N1M. If you go into the CQ, uh, you know, the macros for CW, my exchange on F2 here, I've got a bunch of less than size, which speeds up the keying speed, sends 5NN, and slows it back down to normal, and it sends my exchange, which is 3. I'm in CQ zone 3 for this contest. So it's a super easy um, exchange, so you can really run the rate up there. Anyway, so let's, let's see if we can, you know, find somebody else. Now, there's a lot of ways I can do this. So I can come over here uh, to to the spot window, and I'm right. I'm pointed at 60 degrees, so I can come down. Let's see if we can hear CN3A. So I just clicked on CN3. Yeah, we can hear him just fine. So it just changed the radio, right? You saw that here. You saw that here on the horizontal. So there's CN3A. That's in Morocco. So he's working somebody. He's signing. And then I called him. He heard me right off. So I'll send my report. That's all, you know, just really easy. Got a nice, um, nice opening there into Europe from Utah. Again, point about 60 degrees. So, um, you know, I'm assisted using the spots, but I, even if I'm not assisted, I will spot station. So I just worked C and 3A, and I forgot to spot 
EF8R. So in N1MM, I can just spot him by hitting Alt P. So what you're going to see over here in the spot window, I'm going to send a human spot by hitting Alt P on the keyboard, and then you can see that that was sent out. So it sent a spot out. He's on 14087.9 CN3A, and there's a comment here CQ ww zone 33 and i set that up automatically in the telnet window of n1mm logger plus if you just go to the um, spot comment you can put in text and then you can select what else dynamically will go in the spot comment and so really the only thing applicable here is the zone so i i have the zone check so when the spot went out you can see that it included that text plus the zone so anyway um let's see if we can hear so now over here i can see you know, I could click and, and see if I can hear some of these other stations around 60 degrees. So here's there's CT3KN. I'll tune up a little bit on him. Now let me show you another thing here before I work him. You know, I can tune the dial on my K3, which is on my left hand here, or I can just use the up and down arrows on N1M. So now I'm just tuning up and down by um, 10 hertz. So you can see me tuning and you'll see the um, I pointed at the screen, you can't see me pointing at the screen there. So I'm tuning in him w with the keyboard, or I could use the VFO, obviously. But that's pretty handy, right? You can keep your hands on the keyboard and just use the up and down arrows to two. So he just calls the cube. I am a call over. Th and it sounded like he wanted a VE to come back to him, or he called a VE. CT3KN in a. Um, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Madeira Islands. So let's let's wait and work. There. So I called him. Threw my call in again. No, I'm. I called him again. Call him again. Now I'll, I'll tune a little bit, you know, get off, don't want to be zero beat right on him because typically they'll they'll hear either high or low a little better if multiple guys are calling him. There's a lot of tricks here. I mean, the other guys will have good um, uh, tips on this. Called him. Here you go. Now I didn't get my call right. I'm going to send it a couple more times. Make sure he gets it right. There you go. Send the report again. I sent the report back to you. Thank you. Now I spot him. So again, you'll see over here, I just spotted CT3KN. So for the guys that aren't familiar with skimmer spots or they're only looking at human spots, I just sent out a human spot to spot him. Okay, so um, a minute you can see it's kind of like shooting uh, fish in a barrel here a little bit. So if I come back over here to the uh, uh, multiplier list for 20 meters, you know I can click on EA um, eight here. I need to make that. I made the font big so you can see. It. So I'm on EA8 CMX, which is another Canary Island station. So the band, I mean the band sounded pretty good right now. 20 meters, nice and quiet. My bandpass filter is at 400 hertz there. I've got the RF turned down just a hair. So, so I just call them, just called EA8CMX, I'm hitting F4. Now I just use my paddle, but you can't see it. Now he just sent a report to somebody. Now I can fine tune him with my VFO, not the keyboard, right? I'm kind of in paddle mode now. I got my right hand on the. Instead of using the keyboard to send my call, I can. Oh, here. Wow. Oh. I guess he was calling me there. I didn't even know. Okay, so here's another thing. So I, I worked him, right? He gave, he gave me the exchange in N1MM. If I were to hit enter right now, it would send my exchange again, but I just need to force the log, so I, I use alt enter for that. Um, so that's an, another kind of a technique you can see there. So I'll just hit alt enter, and now EA8CMX is in the log. Just another Canary Island station. So let's let's come over here now, back over to the 
the window here. Now, again, I'm going by, um, you know, I'm clear up here right now at 14.127 megahertz. The next one on my list here is either CR3TA, who's down on 14.009. Let me make that a little bigger. There we go. And, you know, it's automatically going to tune when I go there. Let's, let's see if we can hear um, the CT7 here. Is it 51 degrees? So I'm not hearing anything. But anyway, obviously the radio is going to tune here. If you can see that, you can see the frequency down on the log window here. Um, and of course, the uh, the color over here is based upon whether it's a multiplier or not, or it, I believe that's a double mult on the green. Um, so, you know, it doesn't look like I've worked at v, a VE yet on 20 meters here. So. Yeah, so, hey, a big DX here from Utah. So this is VE2. Let's work him. Let's see if he hears me. Send him a call twice. There, you hear me. CQ zone 2. And then Alt P, I spot him. Um, how about this uh, 9G5W here? I'm going to click on that. So he's down at 71 degrees. That's Ghana. This would be a good one. Now he's kind of weak here. Now here's here's a nice thing with the integrated um, rotor control. I mean, I'm close enough, but I'll just show you here. So let's say I'm going to manually click down here on the rot rotor software, and I'm going to rotate the, you know, I'm going to go up to, you know, 15 degrees or 20 degrees here. But if I just tuned on the uh, uh, Ghana station, 9G5W, with the integration, I can just quickly hit Alt J, and it's going to automatically now set my azimuth to 71 degrees. So, you know, from Utah, that's the direction I want to be going. And so now the rotor um, is moved over. So he's calling CQ. I'm going to call him. He's pretty weak. And I think he called me. He did. So I sent them my report twice. And then I got the TU. Now that's going to be pretty weak. That, you know, I mean, that was a nice one to snag there. Um, again, left channel for the K3S. So again, just kind of demoed the uh, automatic, automatic rotor control. The other thing you can do on the rotor control is just type in the degree. So let's say I want to go to 120 degrees. I can just type that in here on the, you know, in the entry window where a call sign normally would go. And then just auto, you know, hit Alt J. So now you can see down here that the rotor is, um, you know, azimuth is going to 120 degrees. So that's that's kind of cool. So now I'm down at 120 degrees. Um, I can come and look at the spots here down around 120 degrees. You know, so if we go down to uh, South America land, here's uh, um, Venezuela, so we can hear him. I'm not going to dwell on here. That's the VE3 VN. See, I'm, I'm looking here, so you got the. So now I'm looking at the spectrum display with the call sign. So here's the Venezuela station, and he's next to a VE3. And I can just click on these two. So let's. You kind of see the technique here. If, if I'm just. I don't want to move the rotor like crazy, right? I'm kind of picking off spots based upon where the rotor is. Um, because if I click on these other ones, you know, they're not going to be there. Like if I click on IK4EWX, um, you know, I'm down at 120 degrees. He's up at 38 degrees for me. But if I want to go that direction again, just hit Alt-J. Now the rotor is doing its thing. You can see it move up to, you know, 38 degrees. Close enough. Let's see if we can hear him as that rotor approaches 38 degrees. I'm not hearing him. But there's another Italian station right next to him. Let's click. So you can see here, um, IR4Y, or you can see it down here. I can just click there. I'm not hearing anything. So here's a, a station in Spain. I just clicked on that. So similar, I can hear a, w, or a K station there. 
There's also this HB0. Lichtenstein. And I think I might be able to... No, that's not him. That's not him. Um, kind of just all over the place here, guys. Um, let's try... So I just clicked on S53X. Slovenia. And I'm here in the lower latitudes in Europe better. So I'm thinking, well, let's go. Let's see what we got. Um, I can also reverse the beam on the DB18. And so we have some stations. Um, uh, we don't have anything down in Australia land. Let's see if we can hear this V31CQ. So I'm, I'm back over here. I'm going to click on the V31CQ. And now I need to rotate the beam in that direction. Alt J. Should be able to hear him. Belize. Usually have a good path. So the, the beam is rotating down to, you know, around 135 degrees. He's in zone. So I use the keyboard to tune him in. He wants the Y, the y station to come back. So that's a V31CQ asking for the station with Y in the call come back. Now I can change the speed of this, the wind gear too with the page up and page down keys. I don't know if you can see that down here. So, you know, I'm about 33 words a minute. So I just work. So I called him. He came right. Oh, he didn't get the full. We'll send it twice. There he goes. 599. CQ zone 7. Oops. Okay. Okay, what happened there? What happened there was, again, I uh, click on the spot, but I didn't move the cursor over to the CQ zone. So when I thought I was going to log him and send my exchange, I sent my exchange, which kind of mixed him up. And then he sent my exchange again, so I got the cursor over where it needed to be and manually sent the exchange with F2. <laughs> so, um, and so now I'll use Alt-Enter to log him without sending the exchange, right, because I already worked him. Okay, let's, how about this, uh, Hotel Charlie Zero Tango? So I just clicked on... There he is right there, he's a little quiet. So I called him with F4. So that, I mean, just that quick, I just worked the, um, you know, the Hotel Charlie station. Ecuador. And so what happened there is I clicked on him, it, you know, tuned the frequency of the radio, and I think I tweaked it with the up and down arrows. I kind of did that quick. But this time it populated the call sign with um, H, you know, Hotel Charlie Zero Tango, and I hit the tab key. So when I hit enter, it would log in and send my report. So that, that was a quick one. So how about Hotel Charlie 5 here? Not hearing him. Here's a station in Mexico, and here's a hotel or a, and um, that was a air in um, N1MM there. I just quickly dismissed it. Anyway, so I'm going again. There may have been an air due to the spectrum display or something. Okay, so let's see if we can hear this uh, Kilo Hotel Seven in Hawaii. Now I got my beam right pointed east, you know, southeast a little bit. So I'm just going to rotate, I just manually clicked down here and rotated the beam up to about 70, 80 degrees because I'm going to reverse the beam. And so I'm on, now I'm on the hotel, or the Kilo Hotel 7's frequency. Now I'm going to reverse the beam using PS Rotator. So I don't have to reach up and touch the STA 2000. So I just clicked on re reverse on the beam. Now I'm pointed at Hawaii, right, effectively, you know, somewhere between 240 and 270 degrees. I'm not hearing the Kilo Hotel 7, but there's another W Hotel 6 right here. Let's see if we can hear him at 14033.1. Not hearing anything there. 
Um, here's KL7. Again, not Big DX, but let's try him. Wow, that's not a good uh, demo for N1MM. I'm getting a stack trace there when I'm clicking on that window. Okay, I can hear KL7RA, but I'm pointed, he's kind of off the side of my beam. So down in PST Rotator, I'm going to right click and it's going to it's going to keep the beam reversed, but it's going to I'm like he should come up in volume here. You should hear him you should hear him get louder. Yeah, he's getting I'm going to call him. He came right back. 599 seek his own one. Okay, uh, what you saw here too is when I clicked on the spot, it populated the call sign, you know, KL7RA up here, and I hit spacebar, which which moved my cursor over to the CQ zone, and that was a better way to get me ready to just hit enter to send my my report and log him. So. Um, hey, maybe one more. I don't know how long I'm going to go on. I, I, am, I bore everybody with the length here. Let's um, see if we can get another station in Europe. So the beam is reversed, as you can see down here. That's what this, you know, it's physically pointed to about 130 degrees, but I have the DB18 reverse, which is an awesome feature of the stepper antennas, right? You can just quickly reverse the beam. But um, if I left click now and I kind of go back to Europe from Utah, which is or, you know, around 40 degrees is a good spot. I left clicked once and it automatically removed the 180 degree reverse on the DB18 and now the beam is rotating up to, you know, around 40 degrees. So again, I come back to my spots, um, you know, around 40 degrees. Here's a Echo India Zero Romeo. Let's see if we can hear him. Not hear anything just immediately. How about this IB? There's a, a US station call. NN5. NN5T, it sounds like he's calling him. I think that India Bravo is there. So that's a Sicily station in Italy. Eh, I'm going to move on, right? Try IB9 Tango. Not hearing anything. I'm clicking over here, right? So the radio is automatically tuning. And, of course, the stepper, that's, I didn't talk about this, but the stepper would automatically tune, too. So it's all integrated. So the stepper on 20 meters is pretty broadband, so it's not going to tune those elements very often. But if it needs to, it will, as I click on these stations. Based upon, you know, if I'm on 22... Um, kilohertz up from 14 megahertz. Um, you know, if I jump to a station that's, oh, let's say up at 1491 here, this uh, station in France. And wow, getting that. That's gonna. If anybody from the N1MM team sees that, it's not gonna. You know, I'll have to figure out what's going on there. Um, I'm not hearing the station in France. Um, MU2K. This is an. Um, Guernsey, is that how you say that? I'm not hearing anything. TM5T is usually pretty loud. And... This sounds like the OH8X. I mean, again, I'm looking here, TM5T and OH8X. And I think that's the OH8, just, I mean, it's crazy how you get familiar with the way some of the stations. And he's asking for a K station. So I'm going to call him if this is the OAH. Yep. So I just called O8H8X. He came right back. He sent to you, he's in the log. All right, so, hey, random video. 
with some funky N1 MM airs that were popping up there. Maybe I'll um, look in the log and send those into the dev guys. So um, it didn't stop me from operating. I was just dismissing them. There's something going on when I click on the uh, uh, multiplier map. Anyway, I, I hope I showed you guys some tips. Um, if you have some better tips or, you know, if I'm doing something completely off the wall based upon um, how I'm using N1MM, put them in the comments. It'll be good to share the uh, the wealth there if there's better ways to operate. But it's kind of cool. You know, it's a station automation. Everything's automated and the spectrum displays. Everybody likes to see that. Um, you rarely look at the radio, right? It's all on screen at this point. Um, you know, I've, I've worked, uh, looks like, 268 cues and I've got 160 band entities. Again, just kind of having fun here. Worked for a few hours yesterday morning then I've been playing around this morning. Um, approaching noon here in Utah. Mountain um, standard time now. Anyway, have fun in the contest and I hope you enjoy the video and maybe I'll get motivated to do another one uh, not too far down the road. 73 from NG7M in the Messy Shack. Bye.